Hi, welcome to Shine Chats. My name is Paolo Zanetti, and I'm the Vice President of Endodontics at Henry Schein. I have the pleasure to be here with Professor Gamberini from uh, Rome University, La Sapienza. Welcome. It's great to be here with you to talk a little bit about endodontics. So the first thing I wanted to talk about a little bit is, can you tell us a bit about the benefits of endo? Well, there's a lot of benefits in endo. First of all, it's uh, to alleviate pain as present, but also to save uh, the tooth, the mouth, and the, re the total body from infections, which are uh, something we don't want to have in our, uh, in our organism. And uh, the last but not least, uh, we, we save the tooth. And actually, this is a more natural way of uh, having uh, good aesthetics and uh, a good uh, chew chewing uh, efficacy. Of course. And so we were talking a little bit about the outcomes, right? I mean, this is not an easy procedure. It's quite a complex procedure. What, are the outcomes usually favorable? Because I think we want to incentivize dentists to do more endo. Yes, of course, uh, uh, you're correct. The outcome actually, it depends how you consider. But uh, we may say that generally speaking, they are uh, quite favorable. So let's say something around uh, 90%. If we consider uh, symptomatic healing, so the patient has no pain and chews very nicely on the tooth. Uh, but also we have a, um, a little bit more strict criteria, which is radiographic success. Sure. So it means that uh, the lesion should disappear and not be present. But if we think in a different way, like survival of the tooth, so the tooth stays in the mouth working for more than uh, five, 10 years, I would say that uh, we can get percentage at that even higher than 90%. So I would say I would strongly encourage patient and dentist to perform the root canal therapy because it's a treatment that lasts long and it's quite, say, effective. So, of course, you are a big expert in the field and you teach endodontics. Now, are there any false myths about endodontics in this world? Because I've been hearing a lot about some of the challenges associated with endodontics. Well, that's also true. Uh, first of all, some patient thinks that uh, uh, treatment is painful, which is no longer. <laughs> with uh, the new materials, the new devices, it's uh, shorter, easier, and way more predictable. Another false myth is that uh, uh, we say that they could la uh, bring some uh, disease. Maybe there was some um, documentary on Netflix years ago that creates quite a lot of uh, tension, confusion, and, and confusion <laughs> in the society because it was uh, really was relating treatment with cancer, which is totally untrue. And last but not least, uh, I mean, uh, the, some people may think, uh, and also some dentists, that uh, removing a tooth is easier and quicker than doing endo treatment, which can be the case for, uh, I mean, the extraction itself, but then you have to replace the tooth, and that makes the treatment way more complicated, way more costly, way more long. Uh, so, actually, I don't think... Uh, in terms of cost effectiveness that the right solution is to extract the tooth. So when we can save the tooth, it's much better, much more natural, and much more effective to save the tooth. Okay, uh, absolutely. I think we all agree. And I think one of the things that we at Henry Schein really value, right, is preserving natural teeth. So as I lead this effort, my goal is to make sure that we keep as many natural teeth as we can. Now, let's talk a little bit about the numbers. You know, number of procedures. Can you give us uh, an understanding of, of where we are in endo in terms of the number of procedures and root canal treatments? Yes, luckily, let's say luckily as an endodontist, uh, the number of root canal procedures that are uh, done every year is quite huge. If we think about uh, Europe and US, uh, I mean, let's say in Europe and US, it's something like 10 to 50 million root canal treatment per year. So it's not a uh, a small number is a big number. Wow. And uh, in terms of uh, countries and uh, treatment, we may say that, for example, in Europe, uh, uh, let's say that uh, more than 60% of uh, the population has, uh, has done a root canal treatment during their life. So it's a treatment that uh, we need to perform. This percentage is a little bit higher in Europe, uh, a little bit intermediate in Asia, and. Uh, slightly slower in the US, that's quite interesting. Uh, but obviously it depends on the, 
are many factors, but I think that overall, there's, uh, the people knows the importance of uh, and understands the importance of root canal therapy, and uh, there is uh, no problem for a patient to go and uh, to a dentist and ask for an endodontic treatment, uh, which is very well received and well, very well perceived by them. Okay, cool. I mean, I, for the moment, still didn't receive a root canal treatment. I don't know about yourself. I, I got one. Okay, you got one. Great. I, I'm in the 60% of the population. <laughs> now let's get into the interesting part, right? I mean, uh, we've been working a lot together around new technologies and what's coming next, what's in the future of endodontics. What are the trends today when it comes to endodontics? Well, uh, actually, I think uh, if you want, we could divide it in, uh, in different fields. For example, instrumentation, uh, irrigation, and obturation. Yep. Yeah. So, instrumentation, uh, uh, obviously, there was a big uh, change uh, years ago with the introduction of the nickel titanium uh, rotary instruments. But I think that nowadays uh, the uh, most relevant trend is uh, the manufacturing and uh, new heat treatment provided by the manufacturer are yep. really changing the way they produce uh, the files and the properties of the file. And uh, there are some companies like, for example, Agenda that uh, really made a, a very, very successful uh, I mean, uh, business uh, by having heat treatment uh, at their highest level. Because uh, the very interesting thing here is that uh, Improving uh, design can help you a little bit, uh, but uh, only to a certain extent. But if you combine uh, the heat treatment with the design, then you can really make uh, much better files. So as a matter of fact, I would say that uh, in the last decade, most of the company went into uh, heat treatment of the files, and uh, that also is making difference between uh, companies and companies, because uh, depending on the quality of the heat treatment. So what is really new nowadays is to understand really the difference between the heat treatment and what the heat treatment can really provide us in terms of, uh, I mean, benefits, but also how can we really get uh, all the advantages because we still do not know everything about uh, this heat treatment. There is still a lot of uh, research and work to be done. Absolutely, and I think one of the things that Henry Schein has done a lot is actually to invest into really understanding the material science right behind the heat treatment and how can we continue improving to be less and less invasive. Now the next thing is obturation, right? There's been so much development in, in obturation yeah. lately. Um, you know, can you tell us something interesting? Well, yes, we have a very nice story which started uh some years ago is about uh, the new sealers, the bioceramic sealers and uh, hydraulic sealers and they are really changing the way we were doing uh, obturation and because uh, the material is uh, way more uh, biocompatible it uh, reacts with humidity so it needs humidity because uh, the previous uh, sealers uh, did not like humidity so they were, uh, in a certain way, obliged to work not a, in a very good environment for them. So with the bioceramic, uh, uh, we have uh, much better materials. Uh, and this, uh, I mean, uh, allowed us to change a little bit our techniques, uh, make our techniques more simple, the obturation technique, sure. and also made them more minimal invasive, which is also another good tendency. Uh, nowadays so and also last but not least there's a lot of interest nowadays in the use of the bioceramic material for uh, vital uh, pulp therapy so uh, to preserve uh, a little bit more uh, the pulp vitality because they were also used for regenerative endo but uh, what is uh, a little bit more new today is the concept that uh, sometimes it's better to maintain the pulp vital instead to kill the pulp and then try to make it live again. Sure, absolutely. And then, of course, the final area is the irrigation area, right? I mean, we've been looking at different technologies <laughs> over the last years, uh, and, uh, and I think that we are going to see a lot of evolution in this. Yes. Irrigation, for me, is a very challenging topic uh, for the dentists and uh, for the manufacturers, because uh, Sometimes I teach my students that uh, when we do instrumentation, we have a certain parameter. 
So we know that we have to reach the working land, we know that we have to shape the canal up to a certain size, so we know if we do good or not. Same with obturation, we know that we have to three-dimensionally fill the canal, then we make a radiograph and we know. For irrigation, <laughs> Uh, when we stop the irrigation procedure, when we think that uh, it's enough, uh, it's still based on our personal decision and there are no real rules. Obviously there are protocols, uh, there are materials and we are improving in uh, uh, trying to get, uh, I mean, uh, both materials and devices to improve irrigation. But still uh, we miss a little bit uh, something that tells us, okay, we are done, we have done something uh, good, uh, so I mean antibacterial test or test that will show you how much we clean the canal. So I think both in the material itself, in, but also in the research, uh, we need to have uh, a big improvement in, in this field. Yeah, and I think, you know, you being a prominent member of the ESC, and I know you're working a lot with the ESC around this topic, today there's discussion around this, right, in the research. Oh yeah, yes. There's a lot of, uh, of a lot of research, and we recently worked on some guidelines. Uh, and uh, I think that from our studies and our research, we found out that it's uh, needed more evidence in endo, so so we can have um, more certainty. Uh, and because endo is, as you said at the very beginning, is uh, it's not so easy. And when you have more predictable techniques, more predictable protocol, I think that this will be a benefit for the clinicians and for the patients. Absolutely. So I have to say thank you very much, uh, Professor Gamberini, for uh, being here with us today. It was a real pleasure to chat with you. Uh, we have a lot of challenges ahead of us, but at the same time, I think we're all here to support the community, to support the dental community, to really help us preserve more teeth with endodontics. So I look forward to continuing working together. And uh, everybody, stay tuned for the next one. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.